Good morning, everyone. This is Robert T. Green, CEO of Pre Post Game, also known as the players up here to educate, empower, protect the athlete and the family's best interests alone. Today is Monday, August the 10th. Hope all is well with everyone. Um, I'm doing this live uh, to inform people um, about where things are and the status of college football and the timeline, how we got here, but also to um, dispute some of the misinformation and the attempted slander and misdirection and narrative that the media at large wants to put out pertaining to the actual student athlete. Now, if you guys see based off of what's listed on the actual live and what's going on, it'll be some of the things that I'm going to cover on that exact timeline. Uh, so you kind of guys know where we got, where we at and how we got here, but also where we're going. Um, and so right now there's a, a massive attempt uh, by the media at large um, utilizing the college football stars to um, dismiss or try to um, spell and, and calm down the other athletes that spoken out as we are united, as Big Ten United, as MW United. Um, and as I said before in my several posts, that it's not just the Big Ten, it's not just the uh, Pac-12, it's not just the Midwest Conference, it's not just the ACC, it's all the players. Their voices will be heard. Trust the facts, not the process. So we do these things to educate and empower, protect you, but also help you understand as a parent and an athlete, why without you, none of these things will be happening right now. And why without you, these things will not be moving forward. So uh, let's get started with that. So my direct quote and statement pertaining to the players rep and CEO pre post game that the athletes and families should never sign a, a liability waiver on their health, safety, economic rights in any circumstances. There are athletes from decades on every level that regret making that same decision to this day. Quote Robert T. Green. We're talking about AAU uh, programs. We're talking about youth football programs where you sign the waiver and your kid tears his ACL and gets hurt, um, or he ex put a helmet on and gets a concussion. Now you got to pay from your own medical expense. Where we are in society now, 2020, and the billions that the actual rank and file of college athletes, not the 1% like a Trevor Lawrence or a Justin Fields, generate, but the rank and file. But without them, this thing would not exist. So to have them all of a sudden come out where we want to play, that's great. We all want to play under the appropriate circumstances. Trust the facts, not the process. So for that matter, like I said, again, there are several athletes, including myself, that went through the under and played under the NCAA. There are several um, injuries that have not been addressed or not properly diagnosed or uh, inadequately insured. So at this point, sometimes during the year, I have injuries and I have um, issues with my body that the NCAA nor the university that I played for have ever covered, nor were they ever covered because I've signed a uh, liability waivers, giving up my rights to basically have those things done. Trust the facts, not the process. So here we are, the timeline. So again, I may elaborate, but I'm going to try to stick to the timeline and just add to it. But once again, if this video educate and power protect you anyway, please like and share so other athletes and parents going forward understand what's really going on, not what you hear and see on programs such as the ESPNU, ESPNU, um, hosted by Greg McElroy, who is clearly a fan, but also someone that wants to um, direct people to <laughs> make decisions that's not in their best interest. And we're not here for that at all. So here we go. One, um, Iowa players started speaking out approximately June 5th based off of some of the uh, racism and bullying that was experienced under Kurt Ferentz, Brian Ferentz, Gary Barta, et cetera, Chris Doyle at the University of Iowa for over two decades. Players started tweeting about it. Um, then Kirk Ferentz came out and said and denied any knowledge of knowing he wasn't aware, spoke of things such as blind spots where he was later found to be a liar. Um, with that being said, a courageous mother spoke out on a social media platform, which led to about 60 other players and families speaking out on their own social media platforms again um, with statements about their um, displeasure, about the inaccuracies of what um, their sons experienced under the, at the University of Iowa under Kirk Ferentz. Trust the facts, not the process. Preceding that, Chubba Hubbard, running back, star running back from uh, Oklahoma State University, as well as other athletes at Oklahoma State University, spoke about some of the things that they were just, you know, just, um, had issues with, pertaining to Mike Gundy along the lines of racism, where Iowa, I mean, um, Oklahoma State went and did their own in independent investigation that they paid for again, follow along with their own independent investigation, where they found that things that these athletes were speaking about that were never addressed publicly. Um, I, I mean, Oklahoma State came out and said that they didn't find any racism in their actual program and essentially uh, silenced Chubba Hubbard and the rest of the athletes. Um, but again, 
that's that scenario. In this scenario, their voices will be heard, all of them. Trust the facts, not the process. Um, so, and after that scenario, see that over 60 formal players and families speak out on the Iowa, posting their statements and tweets on their own platforms. Again, key phrase, on their own platforms, our platform as spokesperson representation of Iowa on their platform. There was not going to be a scenario where the powers that be wanted to get information, change the narrative, make it a 15-minute documentary, and move on. That was not going to happen to these athletes that suffer under these circumstances over 20 years overseen by the NCAA. Then proceeding that, you had Clemson coaches that would accuse of saying the Iowa coaches, the TCU coaches, saying the N-word in some form of context. Again, you see how some of these things have happened. Since those things have came out, such people such as Davo Sweeney is nowhere to be found. Um, quick to talk about the type of program you have and use terms such as God and Jesus and doing things the right way. But when someone is called the N-word or one of your coaches, he remains on the staff and you don't even address that situation to future athletes um, and parents publicly. That's quite arrogant of you, uh, Mr. Sweeney. But again, that's just what it is where we at in terms of the NCAA and these college uh, coaches and actual universities at this time. Five, the NCAA are probably asking for antitrust protection and support to suppress the amount of money that an athlete can make, but not for the coaches or the conferences. Uh, they have not supported outwardly and made any financial commitment to support the players privately off of their own NIL, name, image, and likeness, which their name, image, and likeness was given to them by birth by their actual family. But at the end of the day, when you actually sign up and become a, a scholarship athlete, there's documents that you haven't read that haven't been presented to you as actual legal documentation, giving those rights back over to the NCAA. So now at this time, the NCAA are saying you can have those rights back, but also trying to sequester and diminish your ability to make money as an athlete, knowing at the time of frame of the day that you have to put into college sports, how are you actually going to make money for name, image, and likeness like they do when they're not putting any finances, any support, any teaching, any knowledge to help you get to that point? That's why we at Pre-Post and created our NIL Academy, also our Sports Visit Academy, to educate and empower, protect you so you can be compensated, so you can learn about the tax code, so you can learn how um, algorithms work, so you can actually make money for what you do, because without you, they would not be making money. Just the facts, not the process. Six, the Big Ten gave players liability waivers to sign without legal representation and told them it was a pledge, not a legal document. Um, this was headed up by Ohio State who have been, as I recently talked about, had a player stand out and say, we are not a part of the Big Ten United. Again, if you think that the actual player actually um, made that decision to put that out there in his own, um, you don't understand how college athletics works. People want to talk about players can't have a union, and then at the end of the day, they're in the player's best interest. But when you have adults that want to have secret meetings with 17 to 20-year-olds, try to tell them what their best interests are, but yet literally aren't man or woman enough to speak out on themselves but have players put out um, actual um, little statements with the uh, school logo on it is where we are, where we've been for quite a while. But at the end of the day, um, it's a legal document. It was a legal document. And that school in particular and the rest of the Big Ten that kind of follows suit and some of the other universities um, thought the players and the families were too dumb to not understand that if you give me a, a waiver to sign, I'm not going to have someone review it, explain to me that is a legal document waiving my rights um, to medical care, to possible litigation based on the things that um, we didn't know when they didn't understand. Again, these these Big Ten that they gave liability waivers and told them it was a pledge, not a legal document, followed by other conferences that was a lie. It was a legal document, as I said. Um, as usually happened regarding insurance policies, um, where they try to attempt to lowball you through the student assistance fund. And I'm using this term and I'm saying things. Most people don't know what the student assistance fund is, but if some of these high um, high rated athletes, for for example, has that's currently opted out. You know, some of the schools have tried to present insurance policies that will kind of lowball. So you say a term, say one or two million, three million from a PTD or LOV. Um, LOV stands for is an acronym for loss of value. PTD is an acronym for permanent disability. In order to collect a permanent disability insurance claim, you literally cannot walk, talk, no longer play the game. And if people that know if you had injuries in, percent, in particular, take Eric Legrand, the former um, Rutgers uh, lineman. The fact that he has to be in a wheelchair, eat from a tube, get medical assistance for a certain amount of time, $2 million of permanent disability does not cover your bills for more than about a year and a half. Trust the facts, not the process. But the most egregious thing is that these schools that in particular, and I posted some numbers the other day about the Big Ten one year, accumulating about 770 something million on top of the, um, I think, 252 million that Nike gave them to Ohio State for over 15 years, another 173 million that Nike gave Michigan in the Big Ten. 
uh, for these same athletes to wear these logos and these brands that literally they're throwing out a two million dollar PT policy, PT, PTD policy is approximately between four and six thousand dollars. Just the facts, not the process. They're not putting the resources behind you like they think they are. But at the same time, if you decide to take that PTD policy, policy and to go play college football or get injured, um, if you do play again, even if you fall, say, five rounds, just take Jake Butt from Michigan some years ago to play in the Capital One Orange Bowl, projected first-round pick. If he basically stayed and did not play in that bowl game, he was set to make millions in the first round. But when he got injured, who also had that policy in place, the amount of money he lost in the recoup by falling to the fifth round does not warrant the loss that he got from that actual draft. So plain English, what he what he basically got from that policy that paid out wasn't a, basically a week's worth of salary or, or or two weeks worth of salary if he did not play in that bowl game and proceeded to be drafted in the first round where he's projected. So once again, um, allowing those guys to take these policies and, and to not opt out, these guys have been basically cut off their nose despite their face. They would have basically been doing – um, harm to their future selves, and again, watching the media attack guys like Michael Parson, Greg Rasal, who I commend for making the, um, a business decision in their best interest, knowing how short the game of football are, and understanding that some of those things presented to them, even a Rondell Moore, that literally you will basically be setting yourself up for failure. And just like a guy like um, um, Butt, Jake Butt, that the university, nor the school, nor the coaches have basically wrote a check to hey, we sorry that you got injured. We're sorry that you risked it all for this hat, this T-shirt, and this aluminum ring. And then basically now, you know, we hope um, things work out for you. But since Jake Butt was injured and got drafted in the fifth round, to proceed how short the NFL is not for long, they proceeded to draft a no offense in the first round in the 2019 NFL draft. When, again, if you understand how this business works, once you make a commitment for Nash to a first-round pick, if you're in a position, you're not that first-round pick, your longevity on that team is not going to be long. Trust the facts, not the process. So as we move forward again, um, number seven, NCAA supported conferences and coaches sending players back to campuses uh, without coaches, medical staff, or safety as social experiments. And I said in March, pertaining to the March Madness piece, where they were going to put players out there on the basketball court without fans. And I said, you think that's going to happen? It's not going to happen. But once again, as I'll speak towards at the end regarding the liabilities, Again, assuming that the athlete doesn't understand his true worth and his value, assuming that the parents just basically want to be that college football mom and dad, assuming that they're willing to accept whatever you say just because and they have you sign a document that goes against your best interest, those days are over. Trust the facts, not the process. As I'm speaking to you guys live now, once again, I'm taking you down the timeline. This is all happening as of June, by the way. And we're still only halfway there. These things have been going on in NCAA and under their uh, umbrella of coaches universities for decades, almost 100 plus years. The majority of things that I'm speaking to you guys about now, I've experienced under the NCAA through these actual um, programs that ask you to trust the process, which is why pre pre post game is here. It's why the players rep became who he is and what he is to this day. Here we go. Like I said, you ask the players to come back, you tell them to volunteer. You ask them to pledge, you take a waiver. If they get injured, they tear ACL, why are they working out? Who's paying for it? If they get COVID-19 and go back and their mom and dad get it, who's paying for the medical bill? If they go back and get COVID-19 and all of a sudden you say at the NCAA with no rules, now you got to miss three or four games. How are you going to basically tell players to come back and volunteer without all those questions being answered first? What's your safety? What's your health protocols? Who do I call if I get injured? Who's responsible for that? All these people want to talk about leadership and, and stand up. What it is and what it's always been and what it's always will be, it's about revenue. And without the actual player and the family, there is no revenue. And so for guys like Greg McElroy and the powers of being some of these media to continue to talk about what the kids want, what the kids want. The thing is, if the players don't play Greg McElroy, nobody needs to hear your voice on ESPU in the morning. That's what you care about. The fact is you played at Alabama and did not make money in the National Football League because you were not qualified to make it where you wanted to be. Now you're speaking on things against the same actual athletes that literally without them, you would not have a job. Can't stand by and watch and listen to that garbage. You're saying that the kids want to play. They're willing to risk their lives and sign a, a liability waiver for things that now we know that literally that many people have not talked about, which I'll get down to the end pertaining to other potential physical ailments in that standpoint. 
This is why players have begun to opt out because of those same situations where now, literally, you're telling them to volunteer for something that you don't have any answers to. But we should do it just because you're going to get paid. Nope. Not today. Not tomorrow. Not anymore. May. So since that happened, the Pac-12 players, we are united for them because of the lack of health and safety and financial risk to their conference and the NCAA has placed them on The Big Ten, the Mountain West, the AAC, et cetera, follow suit to some extent. Head coach Nick Rolovich was found suppressing the players' rights at Washington State. Again, the player opted out, which is their right to opt out for COVID-19. And the coach Nick Rolovich, the head coach of Washington State, proceeded to talk to the kid about, well, that's fine, but as long as you haven't joined that We Are United movement, because that will be a problem. Once again, Nick Rolovich, like many coaches, don't understand how this actually works. If you start to try to go against the actual players without them, you would not be employed. And once that information gets to people like me and the parents, then you will proceed to be out as a head coach, not only at Washington State, in anywhere else. Trust the facts, not the process. It's sad. It's sad. This is a billion dollar industry. And as we get to the end, you're going to find out really why these things have always been the way they are and why they continue to be the way that they would like them to be, but why it will not continue to be that way. The demands that the players pose still haven't begun to be met at the standard in all the conferences across the country. This is why the players begin to opt out. So whether it's the Big Ten United, whether it's Pac-12, I mean, uh, we are united in the Pac-12 or other conferences. There are several things that have been taking place when they talk about the health and safety, the cleanliness, what the protocols may be. They spoke to them. There was mass media statements, responses by universities and, and commissioners. And yet up to this day, as of well, yesterday anyway, a lot of those things were not done, haven't even begun to be started. But yet they want players to report to campus. As the Big Ten talked about, they're going to continue to ramp up the acclimation period with wearing a helmet because at the end of the day, wearing a helmet now, they can get in the run around and say they're not actually possibly exposing the COVID because they haven't put any other precautions in place at that time. Which, again, that's an idiotic statement in itself. You don't have any things in place where they put a helmet on that's going to protect it's been brought to my attention that one of these coaches in particular in the Big Ten wanted to refer that the mask protects everything. So that's why you should go out there and try to refer back to the 1980s and how AIDS, the AIDS pandemic worked. When most of these kids wouldn't even thought about AIDS, much less understanding the AIDS pandemic. But that's your response to a question about the health and safety that you want to talk about the 80s and the AIDS pandemic. This is who you want to put your kids around to basically make decisions regarding life and death in their best interest. We wouldn't. You shouldn't. That's why, again, the players began and will continue to opt out. NCAA media partners have made several attempts at support in smearing, dismissing, disregarding the stories of the athletes, whether it's at Iowa, Oklahoma State, Texas Tech, which is why the athletes continue to use their own social media platforms to stop doing interviews with the powers that be. Guys such as Greg McElroy. But I'm going to hop on Greg McElroy a little bit because, once again, I just don't understand how he actually has a job speaking about something which he's not qualified to do and how adamant he is to keep pushing this agenda that players should go out there during a pandemic and risk it all. Because as us football players, we just wired that way. Like, we don't have families. So between Greg McElroy and now this little battery pack that Clemson and the ACC put inside of Trevor Lawrence to start speaking about things which he do not understand and qualify for. So Trevor Lawrence says players should basically go out there and play because they got to take more risk by going home than being on campus. Well, maybe if they paid the players, Trevor Lawrence, they can they and their families can move out of that said neighborhood. So they don't have to take those risks. Since you, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and a couple of the guys are pretty much guaranteed to make about 60 million guaranteed next year. You know who else wants to play Trevor Lawrence? Kelly Bryant. The guy was 16 and 4, undefeated during the season when Dabble Sweeney on your behalf said he can't play anymore. He's not playing right now. 
Got any thoughts on that, Trevor Lawrence? Because he wants to play too. It didn't matter to you then. But the good thing about all this, like I said, you know, when they made several attempts to smear and dismiss and disregard these stories, and that's why, they, like I said before, they continue to share their own um, things on their platform because they realize that's how you get things done. Don't let anybody twist your words or try to take it out of context and then go on a radio show and I've been hearing it all morning. They're talking about health and safety, health and safety, health and safety. And as again, as I get down into this list, I'm going to tell you exactly why the college football is on the break of um, postponing at best. But it's not just till the spring. If some of these things, as I'm going to speak about in a second, aren't met, you're going to find out that the players know their worth. You're going to find out the direction that the media want to point from where these things are coming. You're not paying attention to when you get the answers to the test. Iowa investigation, that school that paid for the and was found for racism and bullying for over two decades against African American athletes. The university keeps their coaching staff intact, including one who has multiple DUIs and the son of head coach Kirk Perez. Yet the Texas Tech fires their head coach with abuses against the players. Once again, you see how these things go. You can abuse players at one school and not the next school. One, um, both under the, the umbrella of the NCAA, who says nothing. So once again, athletes and parents, you have to understand who protects who and why and how this works. And before you place your son and daughter in that scenario, understand where your best situation is and needs are met. Trust the facts, not the process. Colorado State was accused of suppressing players' health and safety information. That's been standard operating procedure in the NCAA and university for decades, such as misdiagnosing injuries, undertreating, and underinsuring. That's something that as an athlete, thousands of us former athletes that play under NCAA can speak to. I mentioned that earlier. Misdiagnosed, untreated, cortisone shots, not talking about the effects of steroids when your, 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 your muscle isn't healed yet, but the steroid is tearing it apart. For the team, the team, the team. And then when you're trying to pursue your dream in the NFL, you get a, a report back from another doctor that's now your doctor telling you that you don't have long to play because of damage that was sustained in the NCAA. And then you go back to that same school, the NCAA, and they say, we have no record of that. That didn't happen here. Just the facts, not the process. So even with the media attempt to smear and, and use college football stars, no significant change of support outwardly and inward um, has changed anything, especially for the rank and file. We are united, Big Ten united. Mountain West United. It's not just the Pac-12. It's not just the Big Ten. It's not just uh, the Mountain West. Their voices will be heard. All of them. Players, families alike. You are hearing about the decisions that they're being made. That's not being um, coerced or misguided by those you try to put out front on your avenues of television and social media. I mean... She's ESPN college football. You're going really, really hard right now. You're exploiting Trevor Lawrence's name, image, and likeness so you can get your actual feed read and make your money off your clicks and advertisement. You're not writing Trevor Lawrence a check. You're not writing Marvin Wilson a check. You wasn't concerned about what Marvin Wilson was saying just a couple months ago. Not at the level that which you should. But now you're concerned because if they don't play, you don't get paid. Pay the players. No pay, no play. FYI, as I said earlier, if you pay the players, Trevor Lawrence, they wouldn't have to live in the environment that you speak of. And as I said, Kelly Bryant wants to play too. But because Dabo Sweeney said he couldn't play, he went somewhere else. He's not playing the National Football League right now. So it's maybe that, let's see what that uh, Missouri or that Clemson degree is doing for him and his family that everybody want to talk about that he's so blessed to get because last time I checked his record of 60 and four put a lot of money in a dabble Sweeney and his family's pockets while Kelly took all the risk while Kelly trusted the process for a coach while undefeated and told him he's not welcome here anymore so this is what it is 
The season is on the brink to being stopped. Again, barely mentioned, there's potential heart conditions for players that could obtain by playing with COVID-19. Pre-existing conditions, as we know, COVID affects the African-American community more than anybody else. So it's ironic that you have a guy like Trevor Lawrence at the forefront talking about what players should do. Last time I checked, Mr. Lawrence is not African-American. Last time I checked, Mr. Lawrence doesn't live like African-Americans do in their circumstances, their environment. Last time I checked, Mr. Lawrence is a player for Clemson. And last time I checked, uh, Mr. Lawrence is not the quote unquote leader of the actual program. That's supposed to be Dabble Sweeney. That's supposed to be Mark Emery of the NCAA. But once again, that has all been exposed to be the fraudulent thing that we know as college football. Something that was created in 1906 to basically um, take unpaid labor that you get things such as financial aid that people mask and talk about scholarships and they do things such as national signing day by getting free marketing and advertising by taking hats like that behind you and putting it on your head where you could do the same exact thing on your own social media feed and the same sponsors if a million people watch you put the hat in your head they will pay you the player if you did it on your social media platform versus someone else's that's some free name image and likeness information that's the facts not the process so here we go. The media spin. We're getting there. Presidents are really concerned about the players' health and safety now. They worked during March Madness, not two months ago, when the school asked the players to volunteer, volunteer during the pandemic. Never forget, just two months ago. But they so concerned about health and safety, but it wasn't two months ago. They did nothing for health and safety purposes. Now, mind you, got the MLB, NHL, WNBA, who have way less money than NCAA, the NFL, and the NBA restart, all start after the NCAA had the first crack at it. And up to this point, the NCAA has done less to prepare and protect the athlete versus any of those teams, groups combined, or individually. The WNBA does not have the resources that the NCAA has. Yet, what has the NCAA and each individual conference done to protect the health and well-being of the actual players? We know nothing. So whatever you guys are reporting on TV or your radio shows, that's fine. We know. We know because the players is who we represent. Period. So here's the spin. As I said, they wanted to volunteer during the pandemic. But the reality of things are where things are and where they're going. If the players' needs and requests don't start to be met in writing and an adequate and reasonable level from their position, not the industries, I, I, I strongly, writing an adequate, reasonable level from their position, not Greg McElroy's in the industries. There will be several boycotts of games at different places, times, and conferences from years to come. There will be billion dollar lawsuits similar to the NFL concussion settlements. That is the reality of why college football is about to hit pause. Because if these players and families understand their rights, know their worth, and do not waive their rights to economic health and longevity, then if this school and these coaches push these players out there, to do one thing, which is to fill their actual pockets while denying the rights that the actual athletes are the only reason why they're getting paid, then this is going to come to a real bad situation. The last thing that the college coaches and presidents want to see and have to be seen is that when you go to a game and you got the TV advertising, the marketing, the ESPN crew, everybody coming there, and you find out at 10 o'clock, the majority of the players are not going to play because you didn't protect the health and wealth, health, wealth and safety. You did not pay the players. You didn't put any protocols that they asked for. And you just want them to go out there and do it just because. The amount of money that you're going to lose and have to give back, the amount of embarrassment that you're going to have that you never saw coming is something that you're not willing to do. So you rather try to ignore and disregard the players' rights and wants. Now, for those people talking about a players' union, again, that's great, that's great, and that's fine. 
this college athletics is not amateurism. So this is the first thing. So those that keep talking that don't understand what they're talking about. If it's amateurism, let the people like Greg McElroy and ESPN that's covering these players do it for free. Give them a stipend. Send them back to school on financial aid. Teach them something about the business of sport, which they don't understand. This is a professional sport. And that's why I said we're going to start our actual um, elite parent uh, panel soon. As I said, criteria, if you want to be involved, is reach out to us at preposting.com. We're going to do videos like this discussing these topics. So criteria is four or five-star parent. Player may be in the NBA, NFL, MLB, whatever it may be from there. But you know how these things work. You know how they go. We need to do our part to, again, to elevate these actual players' voices, these future parents' voices to understand what they get themselves into. We can no longer be um, silent about how we got here and why at the end of the day it's so important for the players and families to understand that you only get one shot at this. Again, 1% go pro, 99% still generate billions. Those 99% that generate billions are giving hats, T-shirts, and aluminum rings for their time and effort with communications and general studies degree to go somewhere such as whatever school you want to talk about, but you're not going to go get a job as a manager at Best Buy. So while people talk about scholarships, again, even though it financially covers a lot of these guys and the majority of these guys actual time at the university, let's just say you got a scholarship for, say, $135,000 over four years, $150,000 over four years. You break that down, that's $35,000 a year. I can go out and get a job right now making $35,000 a year without putting my body at risk long-term and short-term, while somebody's making millions of dollars, they're not getting beat up and scratched and getting headaches and get all types of things that's going on. I don't need to have a four-year degree and put my time and body through that to come back and get a job I could have got straight out of high school. And for those who say, well, I I, I uh, uh, would have to pay this, and I got to pay these student loans back. Hey, hence, you didn't generate anything. No one's offering you anything because you're not bringing anything to the table. And for those that say that thousands of guys want to play, that's great how many want to play. It doesn't matter what you want to do. The only reason why these players are being offered because they can. You can't put yourself in a situation that you don't belong in. And they want to discuss what they should do or how they should do it. Knowledge is power. You're speaking on things which you don't understand. So your student loans have nothing to do with anything. When that same kid that brought in or that you it was paid one hundred and fifty thousand over four years generated two million in one year from people coming to see him play, ticket sales, jersey sales, autographs of the donors, for the sports traffickers behind the scenes getting you to sign autographs and then selling it at the higher market. By the time you get to the pros, devaluing the kid's own name, image, and likeness, which he don't understand, that's going on. Because those that told them to trust the process. For those same coaches selling these kids to the highest bidder regarding their agents that represent the actual coaches. Oh, yeah, we know. We know where you are. We know who you are. So, again, don't talk to us about the players not being paid on their value and what they don't deserve, what they can't get. If the players do not start getting their needs met and writing adequately and reasonably, they don't have to form a union to change the entire scope of what you want to call college athletics. This is why college football is on the brink. But again, it doesn't matter if it's paused to the spring, because if you don't get some of these things done, you will be looking at this again. Their voices will be heard. All of them. So, like I said before, this has just happened since June, but it's been going on in many other institutions over 100 years. The same people in the industry today, media, uh, commissioners, NCAA, the same ones that care all of a sudden. As these things happen since June to all these different student athletes. Where were they when Jerry Sandusky at Penn State was here? What were they doing with Dr. Larry Nass at Michigan State and all them young women at Michigan State was here? What were they doing with Ohio State wrestlers and the guys from um, the other doctor and the other and the other athletic trainer from Michigan was going on when these guys were getting molested in this scenario? Where were they? Where were they when Mar Marlene Stolens at Texas Tech was doing what she was doing? I 
only see one real understanding and one real change has happened since those times. And this is what it is. This is the power of it all. The only change that has happened is that these athletes and families realize that the protection will come from themselves and those that they hire and put in place for their best interests. Period. End of story. The industry doesn't want you to know or understand that, that their voices will be heard, all of them, take care of their health and safety, pay the players, no pay, no play, trust the facts, not the process. We united, Big Ten united, MW united. They all want to play under appropriate circumstances. My name is Robert T. Green. I'm the CEO of Prepose. I'm here to educate, empower, and protect the athlete and the family's best interests alone. This is how we got here. This is where we're going. This is where we're going to be. You guys will well be blessed and have a great day.